So here you are after passing your MRCP part one. Hopefully you've had a bit of a break and now you're wondering how to prepare for MRCP part two. Now don't worry, you've come to the right place. I'm Dr. Yad, an internal medicine resident working in the NHS and I have passed both my MRCP part one and part two this year. I'll tell you everything you need to know about preparing for it the right way. So let's get into it. The MRCP is made up of two written exams and a practical one called PACES, and you need to pass all three to become a member of the reputable Royal College of Physicians. They are difficult exams, yes. However, with the right preparation and mindset, it's definitely doable. The MRCP part two topics differ slightly from MRCP part one and include considerably less basic sciences topics. Most of the questions are from the major clinical medicine specialties, such as cardiology, endocrinology, respiratory, gastroenterology, and etc. And the only basic science topics included is clinical pharmacology and therapeutics. You can see a list of the included topics on the screen. The exam is made up of 200 best of five MCQs and is available four times a year. It's a long and proctored exam um, made up of two papers, each 100 questions to answer in three hours with an hour break in between. So in total, it will be seven long hours. One difference with part one is that the question stems tend to be longer and can also include pictures such as clinical images, ECGs, x-rays, and etc. So let's get into how you should prepare to make sure you only have to go through this once. Number one, preparation time. This depends entirely on you. If you're working full time and have limited free time or cannot set aside two to three hours a day to study, then I would recommend four to six months. If you are not working full time or if you're disciplined enough to set aside a few hours a day um, to study, um, then three months should be enough time to prepare. I personally prepared in just over three months for part two. How many hours a day? Well, I was working full time as a medical resident when preparing. If you're in a similar situation, then this is what I did. Um, I assigned two to three hours a day um, for studying for the three months and then five to six hours a day a few weeks before the exam. What really helps is to let the exam take over your life for a bit. If you're on public transportation for 20 minutes, you can answer 10 questions. When waiting for your turn at the barbers, you can do five questions. When in bed at night, do 10 questions before falling asleep. Basically, any extra time you have in the day, do a few questions and it really adds up. Number two, what resources should you use? This is what I did. I used PassTest which has a question bank of around four to 5,000 questions. Um, for part two, um, I personally recommend past tests question bank. Um, they have more questions compared to past medicine, um, and I found their questions more concise and closer to the exam style. Um, closer to the exam date, I also used past tests past papers, which are very good. One thing I do not like about, about past tests is their expanded explanations. The information is quite chunky and encyclopedia-like, which is not ideal, in my opinion, uh, for reading and remembering the high-yield topics for the exam. A second resource I recommend is past medicine, mainly for their online textbook. Their questions are very lengthy, and they don't, don't have as many questions on their question bank. However, their online textbook is really good for revising. The information is split into smaller bits of high yield information and can be categorized by specialty or yield. Um, and you can add your own notes on each topic. If you've used the textbook for part one preparation, your notes stay on the topics and you can review them for part two prep as well, which I found useful. A third resource I would recommend as an additional studying resource is MRCP updates. Um, two ways you can utilize MRCP updates is for their online textbook, which is put in the format of an actual online book and is well organized and great for visual learners, and also for their past papers, which are quite good. So how was my studying schedule? I aimed to answer 100 questions a day. I tried my best to reach the goal unless I had a very um, bad or busy day. 
that did mean that I missed out on some outings and social events, but it's only for a few months. I went through past tests question bank twice. The first time I went through it, I categorized the questions by specialty and was aiming for 100 questions a day. All the while, using both past medicine and MRCP updates online textbook um, to revise and read up on the specialty I was answering questions in. It's very important to read the topics, especially the ones you know you need some more studying in. And the online textbooks are quite concise and only include high yield information. So it won't be hours of reading through unnecessary information. I made a habit of reading most of the topics at least once. It took me around two months to go through the question bank once and read the online textbook alongside it. This was feasible with two to three hours of revision a day. The last month, I went through the question bank again, this time randomly and not by specialty. Now, this is very important because the exam questions are randomly assigned and you'll have to figure out which system the question belongs to as you're reading the stem. This can be an added difficulty on the exam day if you're not used to answering questions um, at random. I aimed for 200 questions a day on round two. Now this sounds like a lot, but you've already answered those questions once and they'll be fresh in your memory. Um, so you can go through them um, a second time quicker. Um, the last one to two weeks, you should focus on doing as many past papers as you can while going through the question bank for a second time. I would recommend past tests and MRCP updates past papers. Um, personally, I went to, uh, through around 10 of the most recent past papers. I would also recommend doing the mock, mock exam on MRCP's official website. Now, finally, keep your chin up. By the time you will take this exam, you've gotten into and past medical school, you've started working as a doctor and done many long and stressful on call shifts. Um, you have already passed your MRCP part one, which has a lower pass rate compared to part two. So your odds of getting through your MRCP part two are quite good. Um, remember that on top of a very busy work schedule, you're expected to study for and pass these membership exams all in your own time. If it feels like it's too much, it's because it probably is. You're very intelligent and hardworking to have um, made it where you are now. Maybe those around us don't really understand the struggle, um, but I do because I have been in your shoes. Keep your chin up, brave through it like you have in the past, and in a few months, you'll add your MRCP Part 2 certificate to your long list of other achievements. Do remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. You can find on the screen two videos, one for those preparing for MRCP Part 1 and another uh, where I go over five MRCP Part 2 questions and stress the importance of mastering clinical decision making when answering the questions to get to a differential diagnosis. Watch the video and join me as we answer the questions together. If you had any questions, please leave me a comment down below or message me on X. I would be more than happy to help with whatever I can to make your MRCP journey smoother. Thank you for your time and thank you for watching this video.